now hi friends today we are going to talk about uh, another integrated question in this series that we have started for usmle aspirants at dams now today we are very focused on usmle step 1 preparation and i'm very proud to say that we are the only institute today in india where we are offering face to face classroom program for usmle step 1 and help you to in, uh, counter or you know look at the integrated questions so today we have chosen a question which has a bit of radiology in it a bit of physiology bit of medicine let us see if you enjoy this episode and if you enjoy this episode please you know do get back to us i, I we, we we want to hear from you that is something we always look forward to with me today i have dr with me today i have dr anupa who is a very famous physiology faculty and she knows you know what is it usmle is all about and physiology pathology they are like the core of the step 1 usmle and yes, she is going yes. to guide you today with the yes. question as well yes now before we go on to the question that we are going to talk about i'll show you the clinical history of the patient this patient is a 55 year old male who comes to the emergency department with shortness of breath weight loss on physical examination he appears thin with breathing through pursed lips breath sounds are decreased in all the lung fields and chest x rays provided which i'll be discussing and which of the following findings is expected on spirometry and if we look at the x ray chest this is the x ray chest which is given in the question now this is a very typical example of a usmle question where they have given clinical questions the visual is that of a chest x ray while the question is that of physiology they want to ask spirometry but instead of directly asking like they do in a indian exam they will say what which of the following is a spirometric finding of dash yeah. here they will put up a clinical history you have to identify the disease based on the clinical clues and based on the x ray clues so let us look at the x ray this is a chest x ray lateral view and the striking feature that you see here is if you you know you have all heard about the barrel shaped chest so please look at this how the ap view of the chest is all expanded so this is barrel shaped chest with increased ap diameter of the chest and i'm i'm sure some of you are already thinking about the answers and second thing you have to notice is look at the diaphragm look at how the diaphragm is opening flat normally diaphragms are like this curved up this is flattened diaphragm and third thing to see is the retrosternal space now to make sure that you understand i'll use a few schematics this is how on a lateral view the lungs are supposed to be and look at the diaphragm so what we do is we draw a line joining the anterior part of the diaphragm to the posterior part and we measure the height at the topmost peak most point part if it is less than 1.5 cm that means the diaphragm is flattened and that goes in favor with the emphysema or emphysematous copd changes and another finding that you should remember is in emphysema the cp angles open up so the angle between the anterior chest wall and diaphragm becomes more than 90 degree third thing is the retrosternal space that is the you know space that you see between the anterior mediastinum and the chest wall on the lateral view increases more than 2.5 cm so these were the findings on this x ray that tells us that we have a patient with copd we have a patient with emphysematous variety of copd although there are some clinical clues and you know other clues as well which ma'am will be discussing with you i also feel in future or you know sometimes they may make a question instead of putting a lateral view they might put up a pa view so how do you identify emphysema on a pa view look at these lungs the first thing that comes to my mind is these lungs are looking more black more hyperlucent and that look at the diaphragms they are flattened so there is over inflated lung fields flattening of diaphragm and the heart shadow has become tubular but for a undergraduate sometimes it is very difficult to identify copd so please try and look at two pictures in front of you one is a normal chest x ray which is the first one in your front of you look at the vascular markings and look at how the vascular markings have become attenuated in the other x ray and how the diaphragm has become flattened and the heart shadow has become tubular this is how a typical copd changes or emphysematous changes appear on a x ray chest however knowing this much is going to help you to reach only to this point in the question you will not be able to reach till the answer till the time you know physiology so i hand over to dr anubha to talk about the spirometry in this patient yes thank you dr sumit and um sir spoke about how the there's a flattening of diaphragm there is increase in the 
total lung capacity. And one of the reasons this immediately should give you an idea about, uh, he was talking about a barrel-shaped chest. Now, the reason for that is, now normally, you have a lung recoil and a chest wall recoil. Lung is an elastic structure. Chest wall is also an elastic structure. So the lung recoil is towards the inside. And this is opposed by the chest wall recoil, which is towards the outside. In emphysema, the characteristic or the most important feature in emphysema is destruction of the lung elastic fibers. So the lung recoil now reduces. So chest wall recoil comparatively now relatively becomes more and you get an expanded chest in, an, in emphysema. Now, um, uh, another thing which is very characteristic of COPD patients is an increase in the total lung capacity, which he, uh, which he spoke about, and how uh, the total lung capacity, again, the reason for that is these um, uh, patients of COPD will always find it easier to breathe at higher lung volumes. Higher lung volumes would mean a lower airway resistance. So it is always the COPD patients, the major problem is a uh, increase in the airway resistance. In the case of emphysema, because of loss of elastic fibers. In cases of bronchial asthma, because of a bronchoconstriction and it, uh, the inflammatory changes in the walls. So here you have a, a increased total lung capacity. It is easier for such patients to breathe at higher lung volumes. The airway resistance reduces at higher lung volumes. So these patients will always have higher lung volumes. Plus, because of early collapse of airways, you get more air trapping in these lungs. So that also contributes towards an increase in the total lung capacity. Now, spirometric findings, timed vital capacity. This is characteristic. This is what is done to distinguish between obstructive and restrictive lung disease. For a timed vital capacity, and how does it, how does it differ from forced vital capacity? When I want to record the forced vital capacity, I ask my patient to inspire maximally and breathe out forcefully. What is vital capacity? This is the volume of lung, a volume of air expired forcefully after a forceful inspiration. This is your vital capacity or forced vital capacity. On the other hand, when I want to do a timed vital capacity, which we refer to as FEV1 and FEV2, I have to bring time into the picture. So I ask my patient to take in a maximum inspiration, followed by a maximum expiration, but this expiration has to be done as fast as possible. You need the factor of time here now. So you ask him to breathe out forcefully and as fast as possible. From the point of maximum inspiration, we start measuring, as you can see in the uh, picture in front of you, we start measuring time. Time is on the x-axis. And you can see FEV1. FEV1 on the x-axis, you can see this refers to the volume of air expired forcefully at the end of one second. On the x-axis, you can see time. On the y-axis, you can see volume in liters. So FEV1 refers to the volume of air expired forcefully at the end of one second. Now, uh, we normally express this uh, FEV1 as a ratio of the total vital capacity. Because this is, uh, th this is, like I said, we normally express this as a ratio of F ratio FEV1 by the FEC ratio. In obstructive lung disease, FEV1 by FEVC ratio is decreased. As you can see in the next uh, graph, there is a decrease in the FEV1 by the FEVC ratio. A normal FEV1 by FEVC ratio is about 70 to 80 percent. A normal individual should be able to breathe out at least 70% of his total vital capacity at the end of one second. But you can see in the obstructive, in the graph for obstructive lung disease, he is breathing out. Now the FEV1 by FEVC ratio has decreased to 40%. That means here he is breathing out only 40% of his total vital capacity. Here the vital capacity is also reduced, but the FEV1 is reduced even further. Because you must remember that in the case of obstructive lung disease, what is affected more are the rates. The rates here, FEV1 is a rate. This is affected more. So the numerator becomes affected more than the denominator. And that is why you get a decrease in the FEV1 by the FEVC ratio. On the other hand, if you go to the last graph, that is restrictive lung disease. Now, restrictive lung disease, um, it shows you in restrictive lung disease, for example, pulmonary fibrosis. Now, here what you get is... Um, the FEV1, ratio, FEV1 by FEVC ratio may be normal or may be increased. Now, why does this happen is, again, 
look at the relative change now here the change in it's a restrictive lung disease restriction in expansion so the denominator gets affected more than the numerator if the denominator is getting more uh, affected more than the numerator there, there is going to be an increase in the ratio in restrictive lung disease the ratio can also be normal i said it can be fev1 by fevc ratio can be normal to increased normal if both numerator and the denominator decrease to the same extent the ratio remains normal or if the decrease in the uh, the denominator which is the volume fvc if it decreases more than the fev1 you the the fev1 by fevc ratio will increase so that is characteristically seen in restrictive lung disease when you look at timed vital capacity if um, a decreased fev1 by fevc ratio obstructive lung disease normal to increased fev1 by fevc ratio is in restrictive lung disease now this is a flow volume curve or a flow volume loop actually now on the y axis you have the expiratory flow rate uh, the uh, the graph above the x axis is actually expiration below that is the inspiration so on the y axis i'd rather call it a flow rate and on the x axis you can see volume volume this refers to the lung volume now this is a normal on the left side you see a normal flow volume loop how do i record a flow volume loop is i ask my patient to take a maximum inspiration and now he starts breathing out forcefully max i ask him to take a maximum inspiration followed by a maximum expiration but again that expiration has to be done as fast as possible because i'm going to record the expiratory flow rate i'm going to record expiratory flow rate as well as an inspiratory flow rate so you have to first ask him maximum inspiration followed by maximum expiration and as fast as possible and i get the loop above the x axis which is the expiratory flow volume curve now he starts this maneuver from total lung capacity at the end is the residual volume the loop below the x axis is the inspiratory curve he i ask him to take again a maximum inspiration and as fast as possible so i got get an inspiratory curve which is below the x axis now what happens in an obstructive lung disease is uh, especially in the case of emphysema because of lo loss of elastic fibers now elastic fibers have a role in a normal lung the the role of elastic fibers is to exert a radial traction on airways they keep your airways patent a loss of elastic fibers means there is early collapse of airways there is a tendency for the airways to collapse and you can see this here when i'm recording an expiratory flow volume curve the characteristic the 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 the, gra the loop on the right is for an emphysematous uh, in an em emphysematous patient you can see the red arrow is pointing towards what is typically called a scooped out curve it's like uh, when you take an ice cream scoop so it's a scooped out curve what is the reason for that scooped out curve is an early collapse of the airways why an early collapse because like i said loss of elastic fibers there is lo uh, loss of elastic fibers causes uh, the increased tendency of the airways to collapse during expiration now um, in the question if you uh, if you can go back to the question it says uh, sir has highlighted this and he says on physical examination the patient appears quite thin and breathes through pursed lips pursed lips now pursed lips why this is a very typical breathing that you see in the case of patients with copd and especially emphysema the reason is once he uh, breathes through pursed lips especially when he breathes out through pursed lips he is able to maintain airway pressure and that prevents or helps the patient uh, it prevents the collapse of the airways it maintains a pressure inside the airways which prevents their collapse so finding to breathing to through pursed lips helps him helps him maintain his ventilation now these emphysematous patients are typically called the uh, pink puffers right pink puffers and the reason for this is though in emphysema uh, there are uh, in copd you have two types of patients you've got pink puffers and the blue bloaters so in emphysema you have the pink puffers mainly the reason for this is because now um, th th there is a decrease in the total surface area in the lungs which is available for diffusion of gases there is also a decrease in the blood supply but the vq ratio now here the hypoxemia that you see is not as much as you see in a patient of bronchial asthma or bronchitis 
So this patient is able to maintain his, uh, he's able to maintain his uh, oxygen levels by hyperventilation. This, therefore, this is called a pink puffer. He's puffing, puffing, hyperventilating, but he maintains his oxygen levels in the blood because of this hyperventilation, and that is why he's called a pink puffer, right? And uh, like I said, helping him, uh, helping uh, breathing to pursed lips helps him maintain his airway pressure and prevents collapse. The question here says, the, which of the following findings is expected on spirometry? This is pretty easy now. You find that there is a decreased FEV1 by FEVC ratio. This is typically seen in, uh, like I said, obstructive lung disease or emphysema. Now, uh, thank you, Dr. Anupma, for the detailed discussion. And I'm sure you could understand that how a question is integrated. The goal of this exercise today is to tell you that how they make a question and what is an integrated question which is such a buzzword for USMLE today. Yes, yes. So they have that question where the answer is written in physiology yes. but the history is itself uh, based on your medicine knowledge yes. and the x-ray image would require a bit of radiology knowledge. Pure and radiology is like a bonus that you know even if you know you look at the image it is giving you important clues even if you don't know the clinical history so well you can add them together. Yes. And yes. Uh, Pure physiology questions are not going to be, you're not going to see them as far as USMLE is concerned. USMLE will always be, these kind of clinical vignettes will be presented and you need to integrate your, all your knowledge which you acquire, including patho physiology, pathology and clinical knowledge as well. And recently, since NEET PG has come and in AIMS entrance exam in India as well, so this uh, integrated uh, buzz is now catching up in India yes, as well. Yes. Because that is that gives the uh, examiner the benefit of economy. He can ask one question and in one question he can ask everything. Yes. So yes. he is happy that he's tested your medicine, your physiology, spirometry, chest x-ray knowledge. Yes. And uh, he has only wasted one question and he has more space left to ask. Yes. That is the entire concept behind the integrated MCQs. If you enjoy this episode, please look out for more such discussions on the USMLE Edge page of DAMS on YouTube, on, face, on Facebook. You, I've given the URL in front of you and you can follow us on YouTube at DAMS TV channel. Thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed this episode and me and Dr. Anupma, we look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you. Thank you so much.